I have the young professionals class over in the youth center building. I'm in my eighth year here at Landmark Baptist Temple. Some of you are saying, I can't believe that. Yeah. Some of you thought I'd be like a revolving door. <laughs> it's been wonderful these seven years. Someone said, I don't go to church, I go to Matt's class. <laughs> That's terrible, isn't it? Some time ago, a young man came up to me and he said, I want to tell you something, this is the best mass I have ever been to. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. If you were asked tonight, what verse in the Word of God means more to you than any other verse? What verse comes to your mind when... It is asked of you, what is your favorite verse? One person might say, when I was in trouble and in need, I opened the Word of God to Psalm 23. The Bible said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me out of trouble. Another might say, I needed comfort. And I read in God's Word where it says, let not your heart be trouble. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Another might say, the whole world is against me and my way is rough. The Word of God speaks to my heart when the Bible says, lo, I am with you always. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Another might say, I was in deep sin. The Holy Spirit of God convicted me, and Jesus said, To him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you were to travel tonight up to Franklin, Ohio, to talk to Reverend Rich Abney and his wife Flo, eight years ago when they were on the mission field, they lost their little nine-year-old daughter to a tragic accident. Rich ran out of the house and he picked up his lifeless little girl and as he carried, it, carried her to his car and traveled to the hospital. And there, hours later, she went on to meet the Lord. As they went that evening into little Angela's bedroom, they began to go through her little things and her, her shoes and her little dresses. And the maid said, Mrs. Abney, your daughter, for some reason, this morning wanted to make her own bed and to straighten her things. And as her mother pushed back some of the clothes there on the wall of her bedroom closet, Psalm 30, weeping may endureth for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. That verse jumped out and grabbed hold, grab held of Rich and Flo's heart. What a wonderful verse at that time. If you were to ask them tonight what's the sweetest verse that means more to them, no doubt that they would say Psalm 30. I'm sure John last year, when it seemed like little John John, from one day to the next, I'm sure there's verses that you in April clung to and the Word of God that spoke to your heart. That was a comforting assurance in the time of need. We all have verses that we cling to. Maybe an evangelist at one time or another pinned Romans 8.28 in your Bible. That's a favorite verse of most evangelists and most preachers. For all things work together to good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Maybe Psalm 40 means a lot to you where the Bible says he lifted me, my feet out of the miry clay and set my feet upon the rock and established my goings. I believe that you would agree with me tonight that the sweetest, most sweetest verse in the Word of God is Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
as Jesus casted his eyes upon the troubled multitude. With outstretched arms, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How often have we as Christians have fled to the arms of Jesus Christ for rest? How often has our troubled soul needed rest? How often has our troubled mind needed rest? And here we have this precious promise in the Word of God that when we flee to Jesus Christ, he will give us the rest that we need. Here's the picture of two men toiling in the hot sun. And one man has a whip as he stands over this one man as he's working. And he feels that if he doesn't get any rest or if he doesn't get a cool drink of water, he surely is going to die. And then a man who is stronger than the both of these walks out and he drives off, drives off the oppressor as he takes the whip from the one man who is the oppressor to the one who's working. And he picks the man up, gives him a cool drink of water, wipes his brow. That's exactly what Jesus Christ does for us. He drives off the oppressor, Satan, as he attacks us day in and day out and says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Christ gives us the rest that we need, doesn't he? He drives Satan from us. I love to rest. I love to rest. Well, this afternoon, after church, after I ate, I went home, nestled up on the couch, pulled a blanket up to my shoulder, and I rested for an hour. You did the same thing. Because <laughs> we love to rest. We love to enjoy our rest. And Christ gives us this rest. Here's the first thing. The need for rest. I realize that we're living in the most restless age that we have ever seen. I know that, and you know that. We've come from the Sunday buggy ride all the way to the automobile and men said would never go over 15 miles per hour. They never knew that a man named Dr. John Rawlings would be born, either. <laughs> now, I know you're not taping this on radio, and I know this is not on TV. These guys came up to me and told me what to do, but I know they were just teasing me. They're not going to put this on television and radio, especially after I tell you this illustration. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell Dr. Rawlings what I'm about to tell you. I have to. I have never been so scared in my life back about six years ago when Dr. Rawlings asked me to pick him up at the airport. And I thought, well, if I take a different car, he won't drive back. <laughs> so I asked our brother Neil if I could borrow his car to pick Dr. John up. And then I would, he, maybe he'd say, you go ahead and drive. So I got to the airport and Dr. John got his bags and I put them in the trunk and I was nice. I said, Dr. Rawlings, would you like to drive? And he said, no, you go ahead. Whew. I worried about that thing all night. I just, now I, I'm used to it now, okay? But when I was <laughs> back six years ago, seven years ago, I was scared to death. And I was going down the road and he said, son, get in that lane over there. <laughs> so I obliged and I went over. He said, go ahead and honk your horn. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so there I... Pur, pur. Turn on your lights, son. Turn those lights on. Do it now. So I did. <laughs> he went, you know, they're not going to whip a 75-year-old man. <laughs> they're going to whip me. <laughs> he said, just go around him. So I went around him. <laughs> and I lo he looked back and went like this, and I went like this. <laughs> Man, we've come a long way, haven't we? <laughs> From the buggy to cruising to 80 miles per hour. Then we get out of our cars and we can get into a... We can mount up with jet wings and fly 35,000 miles in the air, 35,000 feet in the air. Whew, that would be a tremendous feat, wouldn't it? And drive over 600 miles per hour in wonderful comfort. I mean, there was a time when people would come to church and... Never be in a hurry for it to end. 
singing for an hour, praying for 20 minutes, preaching for an hour. It was just a wonderful time way back. And you can think as you think way back in those memories, how you used to really just enjoy and go into church and just practically spend all day. I like to drift back. I was talking with our class about drifting back and enjoying a Sunday and how it would be on a nice warm afternoon. You know, if you had just a little cabin way back in the country. You step out on your porch and the, the breeze is blowing and the sunshine is out as it's made its way up over the horizon. And your wife steps out on the porch and says, Honey, how would you like your eggs this morning? Sweetheart, I'd like a medium. Are the children up? Yes, sweetheart, they're, they're playing in the back room. That's great. After we eat, we'll get ready and we'll go to church in the buggy this morning. That's sweet, honey. Okay. You go down and you have a wonderful breakfast. And you enjoy and you talk to each other. You get out and the husband, he gets his buggy and he gets his horses and he... And you go down the country road with a dirt road and you look at the trees and the birds are singing. And you see the little country church over the hill. And you look to your wife and you say, man, you look great this morning. She says, you do too. And you kiss and the kids go, whoo. You make your way to the church and the reverend's standing on the front porch with his big Bible and he shakes your hand and you walk in and make your way on those wooden benches and pews and you sit there and just have a great time. It's changed a lot, hasn't it? <laughs> Get up! We got ten minutes, come on! Did you burn the toast again? I'm gonna bust you. <laughs> you were supposed to make the breakfast anyways. Do you press my shirt? Do you iron my tie? Do you darn my socks? <laughs> I'm just not going to wear any socks this morning. Let's go. <laughs> We've changed a lot, haven't we? We live in an unrestful society when things are always going. I mean, years ago, we'd grumble a little bit about missing a train. Now it's a revolving door. That was my section. Somebody gets you in front of you in traffic, just pull a gun out. Boom! Just, just shoot at them. We've come a long way. Spending time with a relative used to be a week, maybe a day at a time. Now we're lucky if we spend an hour. Listen, don't take me wrong. I am not being negative about this, today's society. I know we must all live in this society. It's a fast-paced society. But Jesus hasn't changed. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The poor man, his hand goes from hand to mouth. He's always in debt. He needs rest. Another man will toil for 40 years at the same job, day in, day out. He needs rest. Families today, the children are shifted from one side of the town to the other as we go up and Saturdays have become Mondays. They need rest. Families quarrel and bicker today. They're at each other's throat. There's rest that's needed there too. People in the world today are looking for things that will give them pleasure that we know as Christians that only the pleasure that we find is through Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. He gives us the joy of our heart. But these people that seek after pleasure need rest. David, in his unrest, said, Oh, that I had wings of a dove, that I could fly away to be at rest. Have you ever felt like that? Wouldn't that be great just to mount up with dove wings and just take off to be at rest? Jesus has the ability to give us rest. The first thing was the need for rest. The second thing is Jesus Christ has the ability, the ability to give us rest. God molded mountains, scooped out a place for the waters and the rivers and the seas, created a mind and a soul and a voice. He had the ability to heal the leper, give sight to the blind, make the lame to walk. Jesus had the ability to feed 5,000 with a few loaves and fishes. He had the ability to still a raging storm and calm the waves. 
Surely God Almighty has the ability to give us rest. He's promised us the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit would come and indwell in us. Jesus Christ promised us that he would answer our prayers. He promised that he would keep his promises. He promised rest for our troubled soul and our troubled mind. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Here's the third thing. The ones who are invited to accept this rest. He invites those who are burdened with a load of sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Holy Spirit will allow you to know your condition and that sinful way in which you're living. The Holy Spirit will convict a man and a man cannot be saved unless the Holy Spirit's conviction is evident in his life. And you need not to reject the Holy Spirit's conviction in your life when he's convicting you and lets you know that you need a personal Savior, Jesus Christ. And a sinful person will get weary and tired of his life and he'll say, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. I don't know where to go. And Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Last night, we saw a movie of a man by the name of Raul Reese. Raul Reese pastors now in Los Angeles, California. And his troubled young life as he was abused by his father went to Vietnam and came back and had to get married. Then he abused his wife. One evening as he had beat upon his wife, as he pulled her hair back and said, if you ever try to leave me, I'll kill you. I'll blow your head off, and then I'll kill myself. As he left out of the house, he was with another woman, and he told that lady that he wanted to make a phone call. So he stopped at a phone booth and he called home to see if her, his wife was there. She was gone. Well, enraged, he got back in his car and he drove to the house, kicked open the door and got a shotgun out of the closet and like a raging maniac went through every room breaking pictures and breaking vases and breaking mirrors. And he waited there in the living room when his wife would return home, he was going to kill her. He turned on the TV. It just so happened that he turned it on to a religious station. And there the preacher was saying, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He said, I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. Jesus Christ will save you from your sins and give you rest for your soul. And through his tears and holding that shotgun as he paced back and forth, he dropped to his knees right there in his living room and said, Lord God, if you're up there, please save my soul. What a wonderful, wonderful salvation experience. The story is told of a prisoner who was to go to the electric chair. And as the guards had got him to take him to the electric chair, he was walking down the corridor of a hall and a man came running with a piece of paper gave it to one of the guards and the guard looked at the prisoner and said you've been pardoned you're a free man judge says you're an innocent man that's exactly what jesus christ does for us he pardons us he pardoned us through the precious blood of jesus christ he says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest the man without christ is invited to the cross of Calvary to receive the precious blood of Jesus Christ, to give him forgiveness of his sins and take the burden of sin off his shoulders. The second person that Jesus Christ invites to give rest is the one whose sin is conquering. There are those who are enslaved to sin, and sin has a death grip on their lives. Sam Hadley, who as a young child was given a small amount of drink and from then on began to drink, became an alcoholic. In his older, in his older life, as he 
began to grow older, life seemed just unpleasing. Didn't want to live anymore. Someone invited him to the McCulley Mission. And there, Sam Hadley asked Jesus Christ to come into his life. Not long after that, he became the director of the McCulley Mission. Famous story, the famous pastor, Sam Jones. The story is told how he knelt there at the casket of his little baby and swore that he would never drink again. Two hours later, he walked into that funeral home and took the shoes off his little baby's feet out of that casket and there pawned those shoes to buy one more drink of alcohol. Feeling so guilty, he walked down the road to Lake Michigan and somebody reached out their hand from a mission there in Chicago. And Sam Jones, there that night, heeded to the invitation, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Sam Jones became a wonderful pastor. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Here's the third person. He invites those who are burdened with sorrow. You know, every one of us in this room tonight at one time or another had sorrow in our lives. Deep sorrow, we cry ourselves to sleep at night. And we can cling to this verse, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He gives rest to those who sorrow. Maybe those who've lost a loved one or a close friend. I think of the illustration and the story that our brother Yako gave about his father. What a wonderful story. How his father was miraculously saved, but Tony didn't know that. Tony, unsaved, took care of his father. Having cancer would carry him from the bathtub to his bedroom, clean him, dress him. Loved his father so much. His father slipped out into eternity. Tony contemplated suicide. One night, somebody led Tony Yako to Christ. There in that Baptist church up in Akron, after Tony had come forward to receive membership and salvation and baptism, a man came up to Brother Yako and said, You're Tony Yako, your father. I worked with him. I led your father to Christ in the hospital. What a wonderful, wonderful, in his sorrow and his, in his burden... Jesus lifted that burden from our brother Yako's life. He invites those who are burdened down with doubt and unbelief. Thomas was a doubter. In his unbelief, he doubted that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. And when he casted his eyes upon the Lord, my Lord, my God, do you doubt? Is there unbelief in your life? Peter said, I wonder if it was worth it to just forsake all, to follow Christ, to give up everything that I own. And Jesus said to Simon Peter, the man who leaves home and his loved ones, and follow me will re be repaid 100-fold. Dr. R.A. Torrey, a tremendous pastor, was a practicing atheist. He wrote the wonderful book, Power Through Prayer. After a message on Sunday morning, Someone had asked Dr. Torrey, You were an atheist at one time, yes, but I've left all that sin and doubt behind me. Jesus Christ says, Bring all your doubts and unbelief to me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, as an individual, how may I find this rest in Jesus Christ? How may I find this rest in Jesus Christ? You will not find this rest in a man. You cannot find rest in a priest. You cannot find rest in a creed. You can't find rest in a church or through baptism or for, through church membership. But rest is only found through Jesus Christ as your personal Savior by inviting him into your heart, by saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner, and come into my life.
Come into my heart and save me. A promise for all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. One day Jesus stopped by a well outside of Sychar. And a sinful woman, a Samaritan woman, came up to the well. And she was drawing water. And Jesus began to talk to her. And this woman said, You're a Jew. Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus began to talk to her and said, Woman, this water that you draw from the well, it's not everlasting, the water that I can give you. And as they began, as they continued on in the conversation, this woman being a sinful woman, and the Lord said, I know that you've had five husbands, and the one that you're living with is not your husband. Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And he said, Drink of this living water. You'll never thirst again. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The story is told of a crippled little girl. One evening, about dinner time, her father came into the house and he had a package. And the package was for her mother. And she said, Dad, can I take the package to Mom? Mom was upstairs. And there were stairs that she would have to climb to take the package to her mother. And he said, Honey, you can't walk up the stairs to give this package to your mother. I'll pick you up. So that daddy picked up his little girl and began to walk up those steps. And with that package in her arms, gave that gift to her mother. That's exactly what Jesus Christ does for us. We can't do it on our own. The Lord picks us up and carries us. 1 Peter 5, 7, Cast all your cares on him, for he careth for you. 2,000 years ago, Jesus stood before the restless multitudes with outstretched arms and said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Your restlessness, your doubt, your sin. Not only is Matthew eleven twenty eight, the sweetest verse in the Bible, but it is the greatest invitation that the Word of God has to offer. Come unto me, all ye that labor. Bus drivers, come unto me, all ye that labor. You need rest. You know, from them Sunday drivings. Ah! <laughs> I was talking to our brother Fox here when he had a division over here in the Northwest Division, and they had Japanese pumpkins on the bus. He was telling me how his driver was driving down the road, and <laughs> he had to pull off the side of the road. Who threw that pumpkin? <laughs> hey, bus driver, rest from your weary labor. You deserve it. You deserve it. I was at a funeral this past week and talked to a young man, and we were going over some funny stories. And he was so afraid of dying. He was so afraid that he was going to die that he didn't want to drive to church. After he had told his wife, he said, we're going to church. I cannot continue to live anymore like this. We need to go to church as a family. She said, well, then how do you expect to get to church if we're not going to drive? He said, well, Sunday school had come by. And this flyer was on the door. And that was our church back home had put a flyer on his door. And he said, let's call this church and see if they'll pick us up. And the bus came by and picked Dave and his wife up. And he was, it was so funny, he was telling me his hair was real long. And the kids sat behind him going, <laughs> pulling on his hair. He was so glad to get to church. <laughs> that Sunday morning, he asked the Lord to come into his heart. Listen, Jesus looked into the weary faces of his disciples and said, let's come apart and rest a while. You deserve it, Sunday school worker. You deserve it, bus driver. Phone caller, you deserve rest. Choir, 
church, we can find that rest in the arms of Jesus Christ. Those of you that need Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can find that rest by accepting his precious blood through faith and asking Christ to come into your heart. He will give you the rest that you need. Lord, right now as we come to you and we pray. Lord Jesus, I pray now that there might be one here this evening that doesn't know you as personal Savior. Maybe there's one, Lord, that just needs the rest that you have offered us. Lord, not only the sweetest verse, not only the sweetest verse, but the greatest invitation. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. With every head bowed and every eye closed, sing this song with me and he started singing and I uh, saw some tears in his eyes and started listening to the words of this song and I thought back about my own life and what God has meant to me and uh, the trials and temptations and the valleys and the mountaintops and uh, it's a real simple song but the message is true.